It seems like uh, we are a little bit delayed with Facebook Live, so it's going a couple of minutes after. <laughs> so we're still waiting for that. Yes. Uh, yes, I also saw. I also saw because of the video as well. It's lagging a bit. Miss Anna, when we when we were reading about uh, Samhal and uh, the the projects that are happening, we were very impressed. I have to say. I cannot hear you. I don't know if others can hear Anna. I thought it, you cannot hear me now? A little bit, if you can be a little bit louder. We can hear you, can hear you now, but I, I think it's, it takes few few seconds for the mic to kick in. So maybe we should leave it uh, on. Maybe you should yeah, leave when it you on. Unmute. Yeah, now, now it works. I can hear you perfect okay. now. Okay. Then I think our come. team is saying that we can go live. Ah, it's working now. Okay. For just a second, let, let me double check on that. Okay, they just informed that we can go with the video and then we go live. So sorry for this technical issue. <laughs> Good. Anna, have you been to Vienna? Oh, I, I cannot hear you, just a sec. We are live now, honey.
So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's virtual panel discussion, Leadership and Corporate Social Responsibility, Development Diverse and Sustainable Future. Um, I'm Josipa Palac, I'm the president of ICDO, and I'm really happy that today uh, on the Cultural Festival Long Nights of Interculturality 2022, which is under the Austrian Commission for UNESCO, uh, we have prepared such an interesting panel with diverse speakers. Uh, I would like to introduce from Sweden, Ms. Anna Hagwal, she's a sustainability leader with 15 years of experience in sustainable businesses development in both national and international contexts. She's inspired by bold visions and determined to make an impact for people and planet. She has a strategic mindset, navigates easily in complex issues, and is a real example of uh, how you can drive change through leadership. Uh, she has background in the field of sustainability, but also in the field of law, social impact, diversity, inclusion, human rights, climate change, finance and sustainable sourcing, uh, ethics and environmental law, which is really important. So, Anna, I'm very happy you're joining us. We also have here with us Victoria Dobravec. She's a project manager for energy projects and Interact Central. Interreg is one of the key instruments of the European Union supporting corporations across project projects through funding. Uh, Ms. Victoria also has a work experience in FIMENA, in European Sustainable Energy Innovation Alliances. Uh, she has Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Process Engineering Energy, uh, and also Power and Energy Engineering but her also voluntary work includes promoting multiculturalism, informal education, and healthy ways of living among you. So, and our third speaker is our CFO, Tony Pehar, who's a treasury and chief financial officer in ICDO. Uh, and besides his work at ICDO, uh, Tony is also a general manager at Gentium Capital Consulting, a consulting firm uh, since August 2015 uh, in permanent addresses in Vienna, Austria. He is also honorary consul of the Republic of Colombia to Republic of Croatia. And he also has uh, experience working in Middle East for oil and gas service company, where he had the position of deputy general manager and business development manager responsible for Europe, Middle East and North Africa, with permanent address in Cairo, Egypt, uh, and, and Cyprus. He worked with major oil and gas companies worldwide, and this experience provided him with the opportunity to manage and work with a diverse group of people from all walks of line. Uh, and he, he's doing a lot in, for impact of cultural diversity from economic and also social standpoint. So I would like to welcome you all to the virtual panel discussion uh, leadership and corporate social responsibility, which will provide a virtual plat podium for leaders in the corporate sector and department heads in various international companies, organizations, uh, and representatives from really different countries, which are excelling in contributing to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The panelists will discuss their roles uh, inside of their companies, but also how they lead and represent in shaping a sustainable and more diverse and inclusive future. So welcome everyone. Thank you, pleasure to be here. Thank you. Good Thank you for having me here. So um, I'm very looking forward to this panel and I will start with, a, with some questions uh, for Ms. Anna Magwal. Uh, so, Samshal is unique in its goal to develop, the, to develop their employee skills in order for them to be recruited to jobs outside of Samshal. Nearly 1,500 employees got the opportunity to enter new companies and gain new experience. Can you explain us more in more details how this model actually works and how does Sweden's economy profit from Samshal's development programs? Yeah. Okay, first of all, thank you for, for having me here on this uh, uh, interesting panel. 
Um, just let me give you a short introduction to, to the company Samhall and uh, what we do. So Samhall is a Swedish state-owned company, 100% owned by the Swedish government, but we act as a, as a liability corporation. Um, uh, we have we have the sole purpose of Samal is to create jobs for people with uh, disabilities that stand far away from the labor market. And we have about twenty five thousand employees, uh, all with some kind of different uh, disability, and uh, um, that makes us rather unique. Uh, and another thing that makes us unique is that we uh, not only employ uh, that many people, but we also want them actually to leave because we want our employees to develop and to uh, gain skills so that they can get a new job outside of Stanwall on the ordinary you know, labor market. So what we do is that uh, it's actually the Swedish uh, public employment service that decide if a person uh, is eligible for a job at Samal and um, if they uh, determined that a person fulfills the requirements uh, which are basically you should have an, uh, some kind of disability and then impaired ability to, to work and you should also have tried um, other types of measures that's available for uh, people with disabilities on the Swedish labor market, uh, then you can get a job um, at Samal. And what we do then is that we train and educate our employees uh, so that they gain the skills that they need to provide services that we sell to other companies. So it's real jobs. Uh, and uh, uh, they work, so the, the employees work and train in different uh, business areas where we operate, such as, uh, you know, facility management services or our laundry services. And we have a lot of customers that's, you know, known Swedish um, companies like IKEA or, or Volvo. And uh, our employees are trained and, and get, uh, and what we do is that we adapt the, we adapt the, the, the work assignment to the skills of the employees. We believe that everyone can contribute and can, can work, uh, just given the right circumstances and the, and the right um, training. So we try to find this perfect match be, be, between the employees and this, and the, and the work assignments that they they need to fulfill, and in that way we can develop the, and uh, create meaningful jobs for for people that otherwise wouldn't have a job, and we can also provide you know happy customers uh, getting the 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 work done that they they need to get done, and at the same time they are part and take social responsibility and and get a more you know um, inclusive. Uh, um, uh, workforce um, and in the end we also try to, to create value for the Swedish society you know it's it's um, and I think that it's twofold you know one one thing is of course the, the you know the socio-economic benefits of the getting people who are not working into the labor market uh, producing you know uh, attractive skills uh, that's good for the economy of Sweden, you know, uh, you uh, you decrease the expenditures for support, for example, and then you increase the the, um, the working force paying taxes and, and producing goods and services uh, for, for the for the market. Uh, but I think also the social value of Samal is really big, uh, you know, creating a more uh, a diverse workforce and uh, creating you know trust in society by getting people you know uh, getting um, you know uh, having a job is not only to have you know getting paid and uh, do your, it's also about having colleague being part of society and and uh, building our common common grounds in the society so i, I think um, it's really like, like the two, two sides of the, of the social value that we create. 
Thank you so much. Um, your work is very impressive, and I think it has a big social value, which is bringing to the society and to, to Sweden. And it can be also taken as a great example also for for some other companies and countries. Uh, creating a, a more diverse workforce is is wonderful. Uh, so thank you for sharing this. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I think also I just you know to add that. Uh, um, we work a lot with other sw Swedish companies, uh, which are actually then you know recruiting the uh, from us, and you know that's also you know a sign of us having um, helped to build the skills uh, of our uh, uh, employees, so that they can be recruited by other companies, and then we can you know get uh, another person to enter to somehow and to start their journey for development. Mm -hmm. That's actually wonderful. And uh, the cooperation that you do with other companies is also something very valuable for for anyone who, who gets employed afterwards also. So um, thank you for doing this amazing work. Um, and I think we in ICDO are very much aware with working with, with different communities uh, and, and diverse people, how, how challenging it can be actually to get employment. So your work has a great social impact. Uh, I would like to ask another question to Ms. Victoria Dobravec, uh, who also shares the values inside of uh, her European Union representative of Interreg, and Interreg is one of the key instruments of European Union supporting cooperation across borders through project funding. It also aims to jointly tackle common challenges and find shared solutions in fields such as health, environment, research, education, transport, but also sustainable energy and more. Uh, Ms. Victoria, as a project manager for energy projects and having extensive knowledge in the field of sustainable energy, how important do you see the role of initiatives like Interreg in shaping a sustainable future and how do, do these sustainability and social CSR projects, as you also call it, horizontal aspects, um, correlate to Interreg's success? Thank you, Josipa, again uh, for having me here. And as a uh, project manager, primarily responsible for energy project, I'm actually glad to give uh, you the perspective of the sustainability in energy and environmental field, but maybe coming to the beginning of the question, and as you have correctly pointed out and a little bit introduced what Interreg is, I would maybe just like to add that here I'm representing uh, one of the Interregs, which is Interreg Central Europe. And as Interreg Central Europe, we are covering uh, nine uh, countries in the Central Europe, namely Austria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Poland, Slovakia and Slovenia. And you have also uh, already mentioned that with our program, we are co-financing uh, projects in variety of topics ranging from innovation, as I have um, mentioned, energy, transport, uh, governance, and many others. And uh, with having such um, a structure and the framework of the work, uh, we consider this, this transnational uh, cooperation and transnational perspective is actually of key, really, importance to reach um, uh, such sustainability, whether we are talking about energy sustainability, but also if we are talking uh, about more uh, social sustainability that is particularly reflected in our innovation projects uh, through, through social innovation, inclusion uh, of migrants, inclusion also of uh, different disadvantaged uh, people uh, and uh, coming back uh, to the energy and environment uh, here we talk a lot about the uh, uh, sustainable uh, development uh, in energy systems and um, energy transition and also how this uh, all uh, affects uh, environment. Of course, all of our projects uh, need to comply with this horizontal uh, principle uh, 
uh, which are the, the uh, let's say, the basis and, and the key on which our projects are building. And again, this uh, mean equal opportunity, non-discrimination, gender equality, and environmental sustainability. Of course, it depends what is the focus of the project and to, to which of this horizontal principle the project can bring uh, most of uh, the contribution. And uh, again, I would like to underline the, the importance of Interreg in contributing uh, to such uh, horizontal principles because we as Interreg are looking uh, in the regional uh, challenges that are currently uh, most um, active and somehow most prominent and we are trying uh, to contribute to this regional uh, and territorial development through uh, transnational uh, cooperation. Thank you so much, Victoria. Um, I really like how you present it also. Uh, this terminology is also really important because inside we discussed this a little bit earlier, uh, we, we, we are talking about CSR policies, but also inside of the European Union, there's a lot of terminology that uh, is actually, uh, which are shared values and these horizontal principles, principles that are being talked about. So I think uh, it's very well that you introduced us also to this terminology. So uh, it's basically based on the same values that we're talking here. So thank you for this uh, this explanation. <laughs> uh, yes. I would, yeah. Just just wanted to add uh, once again that um, all our projects share share this value and should combine this uh, principle uh, really in order to to uh, give a contribution to these horizontal principles that are uh, of course very important on the European level. Thank you, they really are. Um, I would like to ask to continue actually in this direction and go to Mr. Tony Pejar. Uh, and as part of the services ICD office, it's also cr creation of individualized uh, CSR policies and training, which also incorporates horizontal principles. The ability for companies to imp implement a comprehensive CSR program that includes philanthropic activity tied to existed and vetted ICD projects saves companies time and money while increasing their social impact. Um, so I would like to um, actually uh, ask um, how ICDO creates CSR programs that have been proven to be successful for enterprises in developing countries. And through these programs, companies are able to implement uh, philanthropic activity. Uh, and can you tell us more about ICDO projects and explain us the cooperation with different organizations, uh, companies and international companies? How does this work in practice? Thank you, Josipa. <clears throat> so, a uh, little bit more about ICDO, uh, ICDO's mission and, and the goal. So, the mission and the goal of ICDO uh, is a promotion of cultural diversity, inclusivity, equality, interculturalism, human rights, and as well as raising awareness of different cultural expressions and their values, with the aim of fostering cultural interaction in order to bring people together and bridge cu cultural gaps. In addition to this, uh, ICD also promotes and conserves biodiversity, environment, and sustainability for the well-being of, of humanity. And uh, being this is the mission of ICD, we do projects globally around 12 countries. Uh, we have different range of projects, uh, sustainable development projects, but we also do uh, events, projects like, like long lines of interculturality to raise awareness uh, about cultural diversity, but, but uh, not only that, about all other issues. Uh, we take like human rights, uh, women empowerment as well, uh, sustainability, as we said, uh, protection and conservation of indigenous rights, also in addition to everything else like biodiversity. And we cooperate with a lot of companies, uh, especially international by, uh, as, as Jospa mentioned, uh, by assisting in their CSR uh, initiatives because it's, it's not easy for, for every company to decide in which direction to go 
and uh, having a projects globally uh, we do different kind of projects and and tackle all these issues like gender equality women and child, children children rights which companies also want to do and what they can do is also to join us on these projects uh, in in the same way support them also but also to support their own initiative by doing so Thank you, Tony, for this explanation. I think now we have a more understanding of, of the background of each of the speakers uh, and, and the role in which, which they have. So I would like to now ask a question for actually all of you. And that is, uh, Ms. Anna, uh, also do you think cooperation between different companies as also as uh, Tony mentioned, as also organizations as N NGOs like ICDO also contribute to successful CSR policies and efforts? And what is the role of leading companies like Samshal? Well, I think, I think that if we are to um, solve all the global challenges that we have, that we face both on equality and peace and, uh, you know, uh, 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 environmental challenges, then we all need to contribute and we all need to work together uh, across different sectors. So I think uh, that uh, civil societies and NGOs have a very important role to both, you know, and uh, uh, raise awareness among uh, among companies and together with companies uh, on different topics, uh, and to share knowledge and sometimes also to you know bridge different sectors uh, so that you can work together, um, and also to uh, raise the ambition. I think NGOs have a have a very important role to actually like ra raise the ambition for. Uh, for companies and uh, and because we know that we have a, a lot of things that we need to do to create this you know just an environment friendly world um, I think speaking from the perspective of of Samhal, I think our main contribution that we can do in terms of a cooperation uh, would be is of course in the field of you know uh, diversity and inclusion because uh, that's where we have our uh, um, uh, key, that, that's the key issues for us. So, as I said, for example, we work with other companies uh, to help them uh, recruit uh, our uh, employees so that uh, they can, uh, you know, um, fulfill their needs uh, in terms of, of um, uh, competence, but also to uh, to create a more uh, sustainable and more inclusive labor market in in Sweden. So, um, and I think, um, for example, in Sweden, we are part of, of different initiatives also where we gather different groups of both NGOs and companies uh, to, you know, raise awareness and, and you know, uh, um, try to ra raise also the ambition. Thank you. Uh, and the same question goes to Miss Victoria. Do you think cooperation between different organizations, institutions, NGOs, etc., contribute to successful horizontal aspects as, as well as CSRs? Yes, uh, absolutely. I believe uh, there is uh, nothing different than Anna said also uh, from the side of uh, our Interact Central Europe projects. Um, uh, our projects are primarily to support regional and local government and in this regard uh, we have a lot of uh, regional and local government players uh, in partnership of such projects uh, but of course in addition to that uh, there are different uh, sectorial agencies uh, also um, uh, businesses such as SMEs uh, also NGOs but uh, also different uh, other organization and only uh, through their uh, cooperative work it is uh, possible to achieve uh, such goals of uh, sustainability uh, and in addition to that uh, what we uh, value is um, transnational cooperation that is uh, um, another piece in this whole puzzle to achieve uh, the sustainability is that we 
uh, need to work on the transnational uh, international uh, level and um, particularly in this aspect uh, our programs are uh, trying to reduce this uh, regional disparities uh, and regional uh, gaps and differences uh, between uh, countries and also between regions in the same country. So, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, cooperation is uh, very important in all aspects. Thank you, Victoria. And uh, Tony, uh, the same question and, and uh, how successful also you think the CSR program have been and how important do you see cooperation in general between different cooperation institutions and organizations when it comes to initiating and supporting sustainability? Can you also tell us a little bit more also from example and also your, your, your experience? Yes, of course. Uh, I think it's uh, very crucial this day and age uh, in Europe. It, these things are the, the, the importance of corporate social responsibility, but uh, it's just coming. In 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 my opinion, in in the West, it's 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 been more used in the past years. But it's let's say a new thing. Not every everyone currently is adopting it, but it's it's coming. There, so people are seeing the importance of it in companies are seeing the importance of it and everyone wants to do the worthwhile uh, initiatives projects and they are, they are uh, searching for ngos like icdo to help them with this to, to, give, to give their counsel uh, to give, give their expertise as well as to uh, from, from the professional aspect as well uh, why tackle in something when you have the NGO who's actually working on, on, on uh, in field work on social development projects and, and, and companies and governments, they need to use this uh, experience and uh, connections basically to, to uh, uh, do more, which I believe in the next couple of years they will do because we all support this. And I, I think it's also visible currently uh, and unfortunately, with this Ukrainian uh, disaster that is going out, out currently, that uh, also the smaller NGOs like ICDO really did, did their best to um, to be active and, and to, to give the fast humanitarian relief. And of course, later on with the, job, with the government joining in, I think this is a good um, recipe for success. Mm -hmm. So the example you're giving is to have um... NGOs that are already working on specific uh, issues like with marginalized communities, on gender equality, um, and have more individualized um, and tailored program to be actually joined with different corporations and uh, co-share, um, basically. Yes, I think they need to be joined. Uh, they need to support each other in, the, in any way they can, because only in this way we can assure the success. Thank you. Do you want to add maybe something, uh, Victoria or Anna, to this question? No, I, I think I could just add that, you know, um, from a company perspective, it's also about you cannot have, you know, all the resources internally. So, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of, to gain in cooperation with, you know, like expert organizations, which have you know all this knowledge and can assist because it's it's impossible almost to juggle all all these different aspects um internally so so i think it's a good you know it 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 can it's a good value if you can find good cooperation partners this is an excellent point uh, any comments on on anna I agree. Uh, uh, especially when you have international good international partners also <clears throat> it really helps to gain the visibility uh, in one way but it, it also gets more experience from different countries that that did better than let's say one country that that you are currently working on so it's it's it's, it's always about sharing experiences thank you and actually when talking about countries and experience in the past five years, 65 countries have shown an interest in Samshal. This is really impressive. 
uh, on top of being socially responsible, Samshal aims to be environmentally sustainable. Uh, we saw in that in 2021, in-house carbon emission was reduced by 24%. So there are some really amazing data that, that are here. Uh, so is there an, a, a particular initiative or program that you would like to highlight uh, or that you're particularly proud of? Well, I think the main thing actually that I am proud of is working for a company that has like for its own sole purpose to create this social value. I think I think that that's really something that everyone, I hope at least that works on some at least be really proud of. Um, but I do also think, you know, uh, leading the, the sustainability uh, agenda in Samal, uh, that a company cannot be, you know, truly sustainable if you only focus on uh, one aspect. So that is also why we are, um, uh, you know, uh, working also on uh, environmental issues. And as you said, we have uh, decreased our emissions uh, a lot uh, the, the last couple of years. And um we are striving you know to have to also to to continue to half the emissions by uh 2025 and to to be aligned with like paris agreement uh um so, and i think i'm really proud of everyone in samal that is doing a really hard work in and using the new technologies trying to transform you know using electric cars etc it's all all done you know many many small uh, steps get, gets big when you all work together so i think it's a great example of when you set like an, an ambitious target and then you get a whole organization to to walk in that direction uh it's it's the the power of uh, twenty five thousand people working together which is very uh, uh, very encouraging it is very encouraging and I hope by uh, this panel also others will be encouraged by all the steps that you're taking that they can also implement some of your steps into their uh, policies. Uh, so really incredible work you're doing. Um, and the, Miss Victoria, um, when talking about the impact that that we have on society and that you as you also have as as the leaders in in your uh, in your work, uh, what is the role of citizens to achieve sustainable goals, especially in the energy field, from your expertise? Uh, yeah, I think this was uh, already a little bit introduced during this uh, panel discussion. If we focus on the European, uh, on, on the Europe and um, energy crisis actually that we are facing uh, at the moment. I think we, we are all uh, flooded with the news how this winter uh, will be and what will happen with, uh, with the gas, with electricity, how we will manage that. In this regard, it's not just the role of, of the government and the view of energy companies uh, who are making a decision, who are making a contribution and changing our lives. It's actually the role of each and every uh, single uh, citizen to to adapt, to change the change the behavior, to contribute uh, to increase energy efficiency and uh, renewable energy uh, production. And not just by changing the behavior, but here I would particularly like to mention the, the concept of energy uh, communities. Even though this, this concept is maybe not uh, a new one, it, it exists uh, for years and maybe Anna from Sweden uh, could even tell for us we have it and Denmark has it uh, for quite some time, Germany. Uh, well, if we talk about um, more Eastern countries, the, the time of energy community is only uh, uh, coming because also in the recent year uh, the framework has been improved with a lot of support uh, from the European Commission. And why this is important, why this approach is important because uh, um, it involves citizens uh, on, on a local level to really be active players in, in this energy transition. Uh, in this sustainability, energy sustainability, 
but also here, even though uh, such energy communities, their main, in a way, goal is to produce uh, energy, uh, to be self-producers uh, and uh, also uh, to, to consume and somehow actively be active players. Um, also, additional benefits are environmental uh, and economic for such a local community because more people can be employed, uh, they can create jobs, but also there are uh, many and there could be many more social benefits, especially if we talk about the, the energy poverty uh, that can uh, be uh, very well tackled through energy communities and, and therefore um, especially through such approach, citizen could play very, very uh, important role. Uh, thank you for addressing such important issues uh, because energy is actually very actual and we are all wondering uh, what is going to happen and how to approach this, this uh, challenge in future considering um, all what is happening uh, today in the world. Um, but it's also really important uh, the citizens' role and also communities uh, that are involved, uh, what is their role. And I think in regards to, the, to that, maybe uh, Mr. Pehar can tell us a little bit more, um, because as we know, uh, over the five, past five years, ICDO has partnered with academic institutions, government agencies, cultural organizations to work towards our ICDO mission of promoting and safeguarding uh, biodiversity, but also cultural diversity. Um, and in January, um, ICDO also kicked out with a four-year Kalanilan following the Maya Vice project in Yucatan, Mexico. And this project actually includes collaboration with the multiple municipalities and indigenous communities organizations, which are also facing a lot of challenges in different sectors, as also Anna was saying, it's not only one issue that has to be tackled, there are more. Uh, so what uh, lessons uh, or strategies would you like to share from ICDO collaborations and what advice would you give to anyone who would like to implement uh, or cooperate, for example, with ICDO projects or, or how to achieve um, this more sustainable uh, future? Yes, uh, so one of the most crucial things is to have really strong and uh, capable partners. So what ICDO does in the area of, of its project, uh, it, we are very thankful to have partners like these that uh, support us, that believe in the project. And so this is a, a very good foundation. Uh, second thing that I would like to emphasize is the community involvement. So for each project, you really need to, the, the community itself, uh, in this particular case, it's indigenous communities, so you need their involvement because ultimately all of these social development projects are for their gain. So they need, need to be involved uh, from, from the early beginning as well because we don't want to impose anything. So they need to tell us in which direction they see their community go. So we uh then we together sit down discuss and then tackle these issues uh, we are doing our best to involve also the other partners who we who we see that have the interest and also the capabilities to help them uh, for example we are working with um, a lot of it companies as well so where we, we saw the their capability to basically especially now in the last couple of years where we saw uh, uh, that you can do really a lot by uh, having calls like this online. So uh, in, in the same way, the managers or, or the employees of these IT companies can also educate someone from totally different side of the world. It just uh, needs their uh, one hour of their time maybe to, to, to learn someone uh, do something in, in IT in Mexico, let's say, in this world. And, it, and in, it, if we all do this, it really can change uh, someone's life uh, even if it's only piques an interest in, in, a, in an individual, maybe it, it, it will redirect him into something completely different. So we are always trying, uh, as I mentioned before, to raise awareness and to, to really put together all the stakeholders <clears throat> that can help the communities to benefit in the long run. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Victoria, Anna, do you have any comments on what Tony just said? So, 
Well, I think, you know, as, as we've been talking about, um, it's really, you know, about to see also f from a business perspective, to see the business value of, of what you do. And that business value can be different depending on uh, whatever, you know, risks you want to uh, uh, ad uh, um, address or what kind of impact you want to create in society and in the community where you, where you operate. So, um, I think it's the cooperation and and um, what we can do and learn from each other uh, uh, is uh, you can get the best effects if you also try to do it from a, from finding your business rationale for it to see like the actual value that it creates working on sustainability programs or or other um, community initiatives, for example. Yes, I would, maybe just to add, I would fully agree that uh, it is absolutely important to have uh, good partners in order to achieve certain goals. By good partners, I mean those that are really motivated and really committed and, and have a clear vision um, what they want to do and uh, and where uh, their work will lead to. And, and this is very important also from the project side, if I talk about the Interact, but also if uh, Tony and uh, Anna are more oriented to business, it's, it's the, I would say, same uh, background of, of having committed and motivated uh, partners. Thank you, thank you uh i actually think i we have one message and ask a question for anna in the comments uh so maybe we can ask uh, that question from the comments and it goes what would be your message for other organization institutions and corporations regarding uh, different initiatives which experience would you like to share with the world <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, this, Very. the whole seminar, but I think what I usually say when I meet people is that, you know, everyone can do something. Uh, we are, uh, we are one of Sweden's like largest companies. We have 25,000 employees that all have some kind of disability that before they worked, uh, started working with us, they didn't have a job. Uh, but but with the right tools and with the right you know education, everyone can contribute, and we we show that every day, you know, uh, and that's that's something that everyone can do, you know, everyone can look around in in their community or in their you know when they're looking for for new people and to include one person if everyone just included one more person at their uh, at their company well then we would take at least one step forward in bringing a more inclusive world uh, and it's my absolute uh, belief that everyone can include that one person so i think start by that well thank you for answering this question wonderfully <laughs> Uh, I think this question can also apply to Tony and Victoria, though. So, um, oh, wait, we have another question. Uh, and it is for all. Civilian engagement is important, but arguably organizations have an impact on a bigger scale. How can we engage, encourage organizations that are quite behind on moving towards sustainability? Mm -hmm. So how to engage organizations that are quite behind on moving towards sustainability from your experience? Interesting question, very challenging. <laughs> from my point of view, uh, I think we need to engage governments in this case, maybe to issue policies of, let's say, transition, for especially Europe, to, to get companies um, thinking more about these things and doing more, to giving back to the, to the communities. So I think we need to implement some kind of policies basically to to push uh, for these requirements in the next years. 
Victoria, what would you say? Yes, that would be, I think, the best approach to, to introduce policies, to, to really, in a way, to be hard with words, but to force them. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, rather uh, challenging. But in addition to that, is it is important to present them clearly an added value of the sustainability and to make them understand because it is very often the case that companies or, or even um, governments, regional or, or local, are doing their own business, doing what, what they know, and they are maybe don't have capacity or, or are not for the time being interested. And that's why it is important to really uh, explain them and, and to show them uh, added value and, and contribution and not, uh, not just in financial and, and economic term, but this contribution to the society as a whole. Uh, I, I think you, you very nicely summed it up, uh, Victoria, uh, how it's important economically, but also socially. Uh, so there, there, there is more values that are being brought by this approach uh, that are really important in the long term. Um, are there any other uh, messages that you would like to, to send? Because I think here we have panelists that have real experience in, as we say, not only preaching, but actually doing the work uh, and showing with their example how change can be made uh, in, in sustainability and corporate social response, 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 responsibility. I apologize. I actually have two questions, one for Anna, one for Victoria as well. So uh, for Anna, uh, I just wanted to check out of interest, uh, what, uh, what is the most uh, let's say, important industry where you place the employees? Or which, uh, or which is the biggest in the industry in, in, in your line of scope where you, where you provide employees for? I think our biggest like, business area is uh, like facility management services, like, um, you know, cleaning and, uh, and the real estate, you know, uh, um, more facility services that's the the biggest business area today you know someone actually uh, uh, in the past we were more of you know sheltered workshops and you know industrial uh, companies but but today basically uh, almost 100 like 95 percent of our uh, our services uh, today and working out out in customers uh, you know uh, so facility facility management laundry we have our only laundry operations but also like manned manned services uh, where in in um, you know uh, warehouses and for different industries in sweden so it's we have a very broad mix of services uh, because our business rationale is a bit different so we need to find we have the employees and we need to find services that they can provide uh, not the opposite around, so that th therefore we need to have a lot of different services that fits all different types of employees. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. And and for Victoria, uh, I just wanted to also to check with you as well uh, in, in in scope of your business. How important is the community involvement? So we were mentioning stakeholders and everyone, but the community itself. Uh, how how uh, is in, in do you look at their importance when you when you go to a project? Of course, we are looking at the at the needs and challenges that community uh, have because we are talking about the the regional needs and regional challenges and communities are here really a big part. Maybe just to say, as as an individuals we not have individual person as a partner in the project but of course there are often uh, target groups and stakeholders that our projects uh, um, are in a way uh, tackling and attracting and uh, trying to depending of course on the topic trying to involve through various workshops uh, trainings um, 
um, also this kind of webinars and uh, different uh, information and also uh, to to make the change for for the community that's a final a receiver in a way thank you thank you uh, I don't know if we have time. I see we have one more question in the comments, uh, maybe a quick one. Um, it says, I would have a question for Ms. Victoria Dobravec. How could CSR initiatives help tackle the current energy crisis? <laughs> That's an interesting uh, question, how to interpret. Uh... I mean, if I translate it into my own terms, so how can yes. uh, horizontal? Horizontal. <laughs> uh, yes. yes um, maybe I can. I mean, this, this, this R includes a, a variety of uh, uh, aspects, but uh, energy sustainability, environmental sustainability, I think it's rather clear if we are going into the direction of the energy sustainability, which means more energy efficiency and more renewable energy sources, local production, um, uh, and, and etc. This, I think it's rather a, a clear answer. By doing that, we definitely are tackling the, the energy crisis that is currently affecting us, but also if we talk about the, the other points, uh, maybe I can start from myself. I'm a woman in uh, mechanical engineering, and there are more uh, and more uh, women in this field and also in the other fields that are, uh, that before were m mainly, um, um, so to say, men, men fields uh, and also, um, inclusion of various uh, disadvantaged people that really give a different perspective and together bring a different solution. And, and this is, I think, very great uh, added value to have a different uh, perspective to develop a innovative solution that can uh, help us to, to reach this. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, I really, really appreciate your background and your knowledge in, in answering this question. <laughs> um, I would like to ask all the panelists to give a final message. Um, and thank you for joining. And because you're really representing how we can shape a sustainable, more diverse and inclusive future. Yeah, should I start? Yes, please. Okay, yeah, great. Okay, so thank you so much for having me uh, uh, for this webinar. I think we cannot hear you well. Do you think it uh, works now? Now it works. <laughs> okay. Nice. No, no. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, Maybe it's... I think it's breaking a little bit. I don't know why. Yeah. Some technical issues. Okay, I cannot. We cannot hear you now. Okay, I didn't do anything. Ah, no. No, it worked. Okay, it's breaking a bit, so... Maybe, Victoria, maybe you can proceed and, until we see. Maybe. Until we see, yeah. So. <laughs> okay. okay, I hope you can hear me well. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, yeah. There are no interruptions from my side. Uh, so maybe just to really be uh, brief and, and summarize uh, all, all what we uh, talked today from also the, the interact perspective, uh, I would say that really cooperation and collaboration is um, most important in, in achieving uh, uh, our goals of sustainability. 
in this in a short uh, i would say that tells uh, a lot thank you so much Ms. victoria thank you for your input uh can we now anna is, is better now if we can try can yes we can hear you <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, no. so. Well, um, so thank you so much for having me on this webinar. And uh, I think um, what I would just try to summarize is I would urge everyone to just see the business value of a more inclusive and diverse, you know, workforce and society and just start. And take action. Thank you so much, Anna. And Tony? Yes, I, I agree. First of all, I, I want to take uh, the, say thank you to our wonderful panelists uh, and, and thank you very much for your insights. It's really very very valuable, especially for ICD audience as well. And um, I agree. I, I think also that from this panel, we need to take the, as we said, the value of cooperation, uh, the community engagement as well, and also to benefit uh, for NGOs uh, and organizations, as well as the companies from other side as well. Uh, ICDO has, with, with its cooperation with, with uh, many companies also, we add value to, to their business by also, uh, as I mentioned, by doing uh, and assisting with CSR project, doing the, uh, the global policies on equality, inclusion um, and diversity, as well doing the trainings to their employees especially for the companies who are international and uh, and has this mixture of different cultures all, all of a sudden because we think it's really important that everybody gets along and mo most most importantly that everybody understand each other so this is the one, i think this is at least w what we can do uh, when we try to uh, to to um, visit other other cultures and to experience them and yeah, so thank you very much, uh, everyone, for joining us. And until next time. Thank you so much for all the panelists. Uh, and thank you for the messages that you shared and the knowledge you shared today. And also thanks to the Embassy of Sweden who nominated you, uh, Miss Anna, for joining us today. And thank you, Victoria, also, and Tony as well. Uh, we are very happy to, to uh, that we had to panel today with these wonderful experiences and messages and a lot of action which is being uh, seen in the social impact that all of our panelists are doing. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you as well. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Okay, so the video live has ended, uh, which means we are not anymore live. <laughs> Bye.